This story begins where the story of Operation X left off, with Shade Holmes having just gone out of a time warp within an island, and has now made his way to the futuristic city of Neo Japan in the year 2070. But as soon as he arrives on the island, he is put into a coma by several police officers. And when he wakes, a year had passed, and he is now wearing a gray armor with yellow accents and a black suit underneath. He quickly escapes and actually grabs a red chainsaw and a double barrel shotgun on his way out escaping. He makes his way to the streets of Neo City. At least that's what he thinks, as he roughly remembered hearing something while he was coming about Neo City. Then he quickly remembered he's actually in Neo Japan, the current iteration of Japan. This particular being Neo Japan City, the capital of Neo Japan. Or at least it's a nickname given to it by people around the area, as in actuality the official name of Neo Japan only goes to the city. It's just many older people refer to Japan as Neo Japan, as a current era for the country. Shade quickly meets up with Ruby and Tanya, who are surprisingly there, having gone looking for him as they never heard from him after he went on his trip. And then he explained what happened. Jesus! What's that happened to you, Shade? It's not a big deal, Tonya. They just don't want me to figure out what the mystery is of this place, as I've seen reports of what appears to be a ginormous creature roaming around the city. A, a ginormous creature? That's right, Ruby. Oh, by the way, I'm guessing you're all my age now. 18, I'm presuming. Uh, yeah. As yeah, a matter of fact, shortly after the island, I actually got adopted by a nice Australian family. The brother the I got there, the, my adopted brother. He's very nice. Rex Jones. He's a very nice guy. And, boy, we immediately became siblings. Things we get along quite well. That's good to hear. Now, we have a mystery solved. <laughs> he says he grabbed a lighter from nowhere and lit a cigarette. Now we have a mystery solved. <sighs> Shade began to look for clues. He learned this creature is believed to actually be Bigfoot, having mutated over the course of several decades. It's as indicated by people reporting he had large blue pants, like jeans, seemingly were designed specifically to stretch out. He put together a simple conclusion. The government and branch ruling over Neo Japan City actually found Bigfoot and continued to genetically modify him over the course of decades, and simply gave him some pants that were designed specifically to stretch out with him when he goes big, as he determined that he likely reduces in size, since if he was always giant, then there was no way people wouldn't be able to catch on and find him. That's when he noticed that there was a yellow symbol on his chest plate with a black X. He pressed down on it, and it gave him the exact map to where Bigfoot was. He found him quickly, and befriended Bigfoot, as Bigfoot himself was in the smallest state, and is quite intelligent. You won't hurt me, right? I don't hurt those I'm trying to help, I'm trying to solve the mystery going on here. I am the descendant of Sherlock Holmes, and I will help you. And so he did. He exposed the city government for what they had done to Bigfoot. Bigfoot had managed to actually tame the power of his giant form as he no longer went giant, but rather naturally was bulkier. Uh, as it turns out, part of the reason why he was rampaging, as he doesn't actually have a head, the head he was using was simply a hologram, um, as he actually didn't have a head as a result of the experiments, as his real head was locked away in a vault, and the only way he could be restored to his true sanity and intelligence was if he was to get his head back. So Shade broke into the building and stole the head, reattaching it via a nanotech to Bigfoot's body. And Bigfoot suddenly let out a large roar of psychic energy, destroying several windows as he revealed all the secrets of the Neo Japan government. And the city, not the nicknamed country. As it turns out, the reason why they gassed Shade was because they were a part of a former terrorist group who wanted to keep the island a time warp ransom, but were stopped 
by a group of government agents known as Operation Omega, named after the mission that was has carried out to free the island from the time warp, which unfortunately failed, but the terrorists were stopped. But several terrorists within the group took over the Neo Japan and capital and have been and taking it over. Neo Japan capital was the main building within the Neo Japan city, which was the capital of Japan as a whole. But Shade found the CEO and quickly shot him with a shotgun and removed his head of a chainsaw, but quickly attached to a device that kept him alive as a head. As Shade said, Now you could understand what Bigfoot went through. <sighs> After this, Shade would return to Tanya and Ruby, where much to the shock, Shade would actually propose to Ruby, he, as he himself actually had feelings for her, although he just doesn't outright show it due to the fact that he naturally does, does not have emotions in the same way people normally do. He just is very cold, but that's honestly what made Ruby attracted to him. So it was right there and then they became fiancés, and Tonya was very happy for them. Well, can't wait to tell Rex this. I know he's going to have all sorts of jokes about it. By the way, did you know he's actually a superhero named Pizza Man? Huh. I believe I heard of him. He's an American superhero with an Australian accent. Yeah, even though he was born and raised in America for the majority of his life, he never lost that accent of his. But, uh, speaking of which, I should probably get back to America. See ya. Yes, we'll be moving to Neo City. How come in? That's where... I'm heading since that's where our house is. Come on, get a move on, you newly engaged couple. Will we ever see Shade Holmes in his mystery-solving antics again? Well, I think you know the answer to that.